Income tax 2023-2024. Alimony received tax software example. Get ready and some coffee so we can stave off the government attack with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example using LACERT tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, reports at the IRS website irs.gov irs.gov starting at our normal starting point with our taxpayer adam taxman just trying to avoid the dang taxman <laughs> living in beverly hills 90210 no dependents starting off with w2 income at the 100,000 we have then the standard deduction 13850 to get to taxable income 86150 mirroring that here in our income tax formula income 100,000 standard deduction 13850 taxable income 86150 the tax calculated at the 14266 calculated by LACERT tax software page 2 14266 Let's go back to page one. We're now thinking about an alimony type of situation, focusing in on the recipient of alimony, remembering, however, that most transactions have a symmetry to them. So if we're talking about two, in, two individuals that have tax implications, then the person receiving the money, the question is, do they have to record it in income? And if they do have to record it in income, we would think that the payer of the money might get a deduction for it. And so we're looking at the recipient side of things this time to see whether or not you'd have to report the income. So note in this scenario then, we would have a uh, married couple typically. The married couple breaks up within the divorce agreement. The question is, are payments going from one spouse to the other? If they are, are they allocated or categorized as child support or alimony, which used to be a very important distinguishment for tax purposes because alimony was deductible to the person paying and taxable or includable to income for the recipient and child support was not. But under the new change to the tax law, both alimony and child support typically are not deductible by the pay or, or included by the payee. But we have this cutoff date kind of situation that we have to deal with. So for example, let's see, we're gonna be going to schedule once. So we're looking at line number eight here. And then I'm gonna hit the, the added schedules going to schedule number one. And we're looking at this alimony line. So let's imagine that Adam here, although he's making 100000 right now, but he seems to be doing quite well. But let's say he's getting some alimony too as well. So we're going to say, let's jump to the alimony. I'm going to right click and say, jump to the alimony uh, data input. And we have the alimony. And let's say alimony received. Let's say it was 10000 for alimony. Note that there's a date that we have to be recording here because this is going to see if it's past the date that we, that we need in, uh, in order, if it's past a certain date, typically you wouldn't include it in alimony. So you would think it would be for, be before like 2018. So let's say this was on 011, uh, 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 2017. Let's say 2001, 2017. So non-taxable pre 2019 agreement. 
So if it was non-taxable, we'd put a one there, but I'm gonna say, okay, so now we've got the 10,000. If I go back on over, then we can see now it's it puts the alimony here. So alimony has been included, and then it puts the date to help the IRS see and, and double check that the date is uh, recorded and lines up to kind of make sense. Because if that date was after the cutoff date where the change to the law happened, the IRS might then say, well, maybe it shouldn't, maybe that's not correct would be the general idea. That's why they want the date line. So if I add this up, then adds up to the 10,000, that's gonna pull over to page one of the form 1040. So now we have the 100,000 of income. We've got our 10,000 from alimony that is pulling in here to get us to 110,000. If I go back to our worksheet, we can add it to our worksheet. So we have this here, schedule one income is feeding into that line item. So I'm just gonna add some, some items here. So I'll just pull this down and I'll say we have alimony received, received. And there's probably not a, like a lot of alimony received. So, so you might only have one line item for it, for example, per return. Uh, so I'm just gonna say, maybe I don't need any other boxes. I'll make this black and white right there. And then I'll just say, I'm gonna do the data input right here, duh, and then it was for 10,000. And then I'll just sum it up on the right. And let's put some brackets around this home tab font group, put some brackets around it, summing it up. So this is, let's just sum this up equals the sum of these items now, which is going to be this and this, that comes out to 10,000, 10,000 plus, and I probably misspelled alimony. Let's see if I can just fix that. We'll say spell check, spell check, alimonies, alimonies. Okay, I think I got it. Schedule, schedule, change that one too. Okay. So then plus the 100,000 here, it's going to pull into line one, 110,000, 13,850 standard deduction gets us to the 96,150. So, so if I go here, we're at the 96,150 tax calculated on page two, which is now 16,482. So I'm going to put uh, 16,482. Was that right? Is that what I said? 16,482. Okay. So then I'm going to go back on over and to page one. So that's the general idea. Now, obviously, if it was a date after, meaning if I go back on over here and I say that the date was after that point, uh, so 2000, 2019, let's say, so January, let's say uh, January 30th, 2019, then you might get a diagnostic about it or it's not including it at this point in time in our schedule in schedule one not including it because that would be after uh the cutoff date now just to note the the what's going to happen here remember what happens is the payer if it was alimony it used to be before the date what would happen is if we determined that it was alimony and let's imagine adam here was paying the alimony instead of receiving the alimony then then adam if i go to schedule one on page two would have possibly the ability to have the alimony paid let's jump to that one right click and say go into here and say let's imagine he was the payer of alimony note if he pays the alimony he might get a deduction therefore the irs wants to know the recipient let's say jane is the recipient recipient's last name taxman taxman and social security number, uh, da, 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 da. amount paid, let's say 10,000. So now he's the payer date. Let's say it happened before the cutoff date. So 01, uh, 01, uh, let's say 18 and okay. So then if I go back on over, if he was the payer, he'd get a deduction, right? So now we've got the 10,000 here and that feeds into the form 1040 where we have, where we see the 10,000 being a deduction. So see how there's symmetry here. The person that is paying, if they get the deduction, the IRS says, okay, if we're gonna give you that deduction, 
then what we want from you is to rat out who you gave the money to, just like just like we do with the W-2 wages, with the W-2 telling the person that you paid, just like with the 1099, ratting out the sole proprietor that you gave the money to, because if you get that deduction, we're going to get our money from someone, says the IRS, and we're going after this social security number. So that means that if you're the recipient of the of the money, then then you have to know it'd be just like you got a 1099 in essence. If your spouse reported a deduction, then the social security number is telling the IRS that you got income in a similar fashion as a W-2 or 1099 tells the IRS that you have income. Therefore, your side needs to mirror this 10,000 or else you would think that there's going to be problems and the IRS is going to is going to send out letters saying that that they have a source of income that you didn't record and then you get into issues there and then you have to hire the lawyers and then the lawyers drain you dry and then you pay them and they laugh in your face as they take your money and then and further aggregate uh the already tense situation and frustration so uh, to avoid that you want to you'd like to have be able to communicate enough to have the symmetry on these two side of things now i think it's actually good in my opinion that the IRS is removing this uh, for later agreements because then you might say well that's not really fair to the person that gets the deduction but what will happen is that you would think that the negotiation of the agreement will then take into consideration the current tax situation and it should be easier to do so it will simply be reflected reflected in the tax situation and then and you won't have to have to hopefully deal with this added complication of tax implications with payments going from one ex-spouse to another uh, ex-spouse. So that's the general the general idea with the alimonies. So don't make the alimony payments like the Alamo's last stand that's that, you know, you want to make it so uh, so so you want to anyway, that's that.